So there we are again in the second part of this demonstration of the transformer analysis. We wanted to go to the sim file and went already through the fem file. One thing I forgot in the fem file, the most important thing, namely the resistor, that is the load of this transformer. This one is highlighted now, you see it here. So this is a connection between the two lines, between the two ports of the outgoing co uh, coil. And this is element is a special type, it's a 1D element, it's a circuit element that uh, allows us to give a value for the resistance there. Let's look at the properties of this element and we see that this element has a property of 10 ohm and this is a parameter expression that allows us to change this one. We could even run a um, parameter sweep over the analysis to change this value by many many analysis points and then get the whole characteristic of the transformer at different load conditions. So let's go to the next step, the simulation file. The simulation file contains information about the boundary conditions, the solution type and the results of this analysis. So in the, in the simulation file you see that we have two solutions. The first one is this one that is called time domain 10 ohm and the second one is this one that is called time domain 0 ohm. The first one is made with a resistance value of 10 ohm and the second one with 0 ohm and so this uh, way uh, allows us to uh, compare the two results. We have given a load to the primary coil um, and this load has a characteristic of a harmonic load with a peak amplitude of 0.1 ampere and 50 hertz and a phase shift of 90 degree. And in the solution, let's go to the properties of this solution. In the solution there are time steps and the time steps are set to 144, each one with a step size of 1 divided by 1800 seconds. So this is the time period that we run our solve over and this is the period of a whole period of a sinus or cosinus wave. So we look at the output requests. You see that there are some switches set on. So we requested the magnetic flux density, the current density, the eddy current losses density in this analysis and um, this is for the plot results that we will see in the color pictures and other results that we request are tabular results that we will get as graphs and these tabular results we requested there the total force of the the voltage and the current on the resistor and on the coils and also the eddy current losses on each of the parts there. So the same applies for the other solution and you see here that this is a solution type of a magnetodynamic transient analysis. It's a 3D electromagnetic solution with the solver magnetics. So the solution, the solve time is some um, minutes or I think nearly, nearly one hour because of those 144 steps. Each one is a non-linear step that has to cycle over the nonlinear um, behavior and so I did not do this now, I did this, I did this prior to the demonstration. Let's look at the results only now. You see that there are, for each solution there is a result, a tabular result. This one is for the solution without loading and this one is for the solution with the loading of 10 ohm. Let's look first into the non-loaded case. We have voltage and current results on the resistor. Let's look on these two first. So the voltage and the current in the case of non-loaded transformer. The red curve is the one for the voltage and the blue one is for the current and the voltage in the non-linear uh, in a, the voltage in a non-loaded case should be zero 
and in fact what you see here the voltage in these these numbers show around zero so there is zero load there is zero voltage on this transformer and the current the blue one let's look at the peak point here the current shows that there is a maximum current of about 8 amperes and this is in the unloaded case. Let's compare this with the loaded case. So let's open the same two curves in the in the case of a loaded transformer. So in this case it is completely different. We see that current and voltage are phase shifted by 90 degrees and we see that the sinus behavior is changed by a nonlinear um, type and this nonlinear type this nonlinear behavior comes from the saturation effects that we have applied to the analysis so it's a very accurate analysis so we can also see the eddy current losses let's compare the eddy current losses from the loaded and from the non-loaded case so if we see these two we see that one of them the blue curve is the one that is the unloaded case and the red curve is the one that is the loaded case again we see the nonlinear behavior and we see that the the blue curve is smaller so the unloaded curve has smaller um, eddy current losses on the core we can also see the forces that we requested on the core. Let's take the three curves for X, Y and Z force. And we see them all together now and we can understand that the red curve is the highest one, the dominant one. This is the X direction of the core. So let's compare the X direction of the unloaded with the X direction of the loaded core. And we can see that there is a quite big difference between them so one of the cases is having smaller forces than the other one so so far for the graphing results that we get from this type of analysis now let's go to the plot results the plot results are shown in the post processing navigator we have plot results for the solution with the loaded and plot results for the solution from the unloaded analysis. Let's go to the loaded ones and there you see each time step has results and we can cycle through the results now. It's a very detailed result that we get. Let's open for example the second step. Let's go to the eddy current losses density that we requested and I have prepared a small template that automatically switches to the core. So we see the losses on the core now and we get an understanding how the losses are um, spread over the core geometry and we can even cycle through the steps of the of the analysis time and see what happens there getting understanding of how we can maybe change the results change the losses reduce the losses next let's go to the eddy currents in the core so the eddy currents produce the losses let's go to those eddy currents and we see how they behave so the currents that are forced on the core you see how they behave on the geometry and very interesting is you can see because of the lamination effect that they behave only in the lamination direction there are losses there are eddy currents and this of course reduces the losses uh, very strongly and again you can cycle through the steps of your analysis time and see how they behave and of course something is happening there huh? okay last thing that we see oh no uh, not the last thing the third thing we want to see are the eddy currents in the coil that goes out so so now we switch on over to the outgoing coil and we can also here we can see how the currents um, the eddy currents are 
spread over the geometry and it is quite interesting to see because of this quite thick winding that the eddy currents are um, are shown here somewhere they are smaller somewhere they are larger and this of course comes from from these dynamic effects and this can maybe help understanding what happens inside such a thick winding all effects skin skin effects and proximity effects are captured in this analysis the last result that i wanted to show you is the flux density that we of course get so in tesla we get the behavior of the flux density how it behaves in this core and of course we can cycle through the steps that we got there and this is what i wanted to show you i hope that you found it interesting if you have any questions don't hesitate contacting me thank you very much for your assistance Bye.